Hello everybody and in this video we will continue learning how to print on the screen and at the end of the video we will learn what is a variable, how to use a variable and how to use variable to print on the screen and do some calculations so we will learn new thing variables. I just created a new project lesson 2 like I did in the previous lesson and now in Visual Studio we need to activate this project, so I will activate it from here. Set a startup project. Okay, so now we are good to go, and now it's using this project to compile. So let's continue now learning to use C out. I'm teaching by examples here. Um, I have many examples here, and I'm teaching using these examples. I'm just going to copy paste it here, so it's going to be faster. So let's say that we are printing this kind of thing here that we are buying a car and then we need to print this kind of registering card just to say thank you buying this card and this is how you, you how you can get service for the car and so on and this is how it, the card would look so let's pretend that this is the card okay so I will compile this and let's see how it looks on a black window so there we go your Audi registration card thank you for buying a Audi, Audi car, Audi is built carefully, blah 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 and so the point here is that we are mentioning this Audi in many different places so if I just show it's here, it's here, it's here, 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 here so and also here now let's say that this was the program this company was using to print for different cars let's say that this company is selling many different kind of cars not only Audi Perse, Jaguar and everything. So is this useful? The problem is that if we have another car we need to uh, copy this and we need to just uh, replace all these Audis, the Perse. Let's say that we are buying a Perse then we will need to need to do like this. We will need to replace all these uh, let's say Jaguar. Okay, Jaguar. So if we do Jaguar what's, what, what do we need to do? We need to find all the all the all these cars there replace 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 so and so so it's quite difficult and imagine imagine you would have hundreds or thousands of these kind of thing in your project that would be that would be very difficult right so what we can do here is that we can create a variable and this is a new thing variable so we will learn slowly but surely so let's create a string variable string and if we are using a string variable we need to include the string library here string let's call it um, just car name so this is a variable called car name and I will initialize it to Audi Audi so this car is Audi car how do we need to change this so that instead of using the Audi here we will use this variable here instead and I've already done this so I will comment this out we are not using this version commenting out means that the computer will ignore this code so instead of doing like that we will do like this and um, so it's exactly what is here but instead of fixing that string here we are using a variable here so your and then we are adding the variable here your Audi space registration card and so on thank you for buying a and then whatever this one is it's Audi so Audi goes here so where, wherever you have this this car name variable it will be replaced by the value of it this is the value of the variable so wherever you have this variable the computer will put Audi there because Audi is the uh, Audi is its value. So let's run it now, and we will see it's exactly the same. So what is the benefit with this one? Well, well, it's easy to now change. Let's say that we have another car. I can copy this code, put it here. I can change the variable here in the in the middle. Let's say Jaguar. Jaguar. Okay. 
first the variable has value Audi and this will print for Audi and then we will change the variable to Jaguar now this code is exactly the same code but the only difference is that now the variable has a different value now it has a value Jaguar so in this here on this line it will print your Jaguar registration card thank you for buying a Jaguar and it's Jaguar because it's the it's the latest assignment which matters here when we are assigning assigning a new value the previous will be overwritten so the value of this variable is Jaguar from this moment on forwards okay very good and let's just test that it works And there we go and uh, oh, we I didn't put space but but there is a Jaguar and there is the Audi okay good we could obviously easily do more of this we could put pressure pressure here so this section will print pressure registration card for pressure you see the difference we don't need to change these 10 places we don't need to change this one this one this one because this variable holds that value and it will be placed there so that's one that's one benefit of using variables now let's continue learning variables and i have now i have print print a presentation about variables i i try to kind of explain it without c++ now let's see let's see how well i can do this We can see variable like like a box or like a container like this. So I use this. Okay, so this is the box here. So this is the variable. All of this. So when we create string card name, we can see it like this: that this box is the variable, and the name of the box, the label label on a box is the name of the name of the variable so this label in in a box tells that which box we are talking about which variable we are talking about so if there's another box here that might have a different name so this is the name name so name of the variable is is kind of same thing as the label on a box okay let's continue so the next step here is that let's say now that we will we will assign a value so again card name card name um, is the label that we it tells that which box we are talking about because we might have other boxes here as well and when we say card name equals audi that's when we are putting this this note or paper whatever this is we are placing that in the box and this is the value value on that note or that paper so the box can take take a one it can take one paper okay the rule is here it can take only one paper not multiple papers okay <laughs> let's remember this rule let's let's assume that the box can only contain one paper at the time okay so this operation here puts that paper there and the value of this box is kind of this whatever in, in a paper and if we are printing now this card name it will take the note and take the content of that paper and print that one so this one this one here card name that one tells that which box we need to go and this C out this operation here is asking that what is what is in the paper okay let's continue number three okay so let's let's change it a little bit again so let's see what happens here now so we are now on this line we are printing that and now we are setting we are doing the jaguar now okay so what happens when we do the jaguar here? oh small what happens when we are doing this line uh, assigning jaguar in the name what happened now is that the paper inside the box we will get here uh, jaguar Jaguar now okay because of this line 
so it will it will put Jaguar paper in the, in the box. Jaguar paper. This will find the box with the label with the label car name, which is here. Box with the label car name, and this operation will ask that hey, give me the text from the paper, and the text from the paper is here. Okay, let's continue, and we we go to the picture number four. So what's happening here? So now we have a new variable. We are creating a new variable called shop name. Let's call it just shop name. Shop name. So what happens is that we are creating a new box. So always when we are creating a string variable, it's kind of creating a new box. And this will be the name of the box. And so the label on the box will get the name. And now if we are assigning assigning a value like shop name equals shopee that means that we will place the paper inside the box and in the paper we have that value shopee okay so now if we are if we say see out see out shop name it will print shopee because that's what that's what's in the paper and one more example so what happens in this situation okay we are creating again a new box called message here we're creating a new box okay it's creating a box the name of the box is message so the label gets gets message here outside the box this is shop name variable this is car name variable and this is a message variable they are all boxes and we are immediately putting a paper inside inside so this car name will go to the car name box okay because that's the name of the box it will take take the paper text and put it here this one does the same thing it finds the box with the label shop name shop name box so to speak and it will return it will place here whatever value is there over here so we will get audi plus shopee and that will be assigned to the message box so that's why this value here will be just those things combined i, I just wanted to illustrate this i'm not sure if this is a good illustration sorry guys if i bored you but i was just thinking this might illustrate a little bit let's continue now with the code and try to see the same thing from the code okay i will now comment this one also out we are not using it anymore okay and now i will add more code here to learn more about variables okay so how do we play with the strings string variables so here we are creating two string variables first name and surname okay and let's print them using the c out okay my name is and then we are adding something here uh, sorry we are printing something after this means that we are printing something after so after this we will continue printing the first name I think everybody now knows what it's what is coming it will be the value of the first message which is john so the john goes there and then we will continue printing whatever the surname is at the moment and the surname is brown so this will print my name is john brown so let's run this one and see it's really like that there you go my name is john brown obviously this is the first name and this is the surname we want to have the space i guess yeah so how would we put the space here any suggestions i think somebody got it already right we just place the space in between isn't it so so we will say my name is the only thing we change is that we will add that space there between after the first name we will add just fixed space there and that's it another way to do the same thing print the full name will be that we will create a new variable which will hold that that full name so we could create a new string variable called full name now my question to you is that how do you now set the full name full name that it contains this one plus this one 
I think you got it right. I actually said it already. It's very natural, but guys. So its full name will be obviously first name plus surname. This is not rocket science, is it? So let's see one more time. It's very simple. Obviously, string plus string means that you are adding them together and the result will be those two added together. So the full name value will be now John Brown. And let's print that. And copy, copy the code from me. So my name is full name. So that's how we, we could print the same thing. So this is, this is basically printing exactly the same thing what we are printing here. And um, we want the space here, right? So this is a this is a task for you. Again, this is gonna print now the full name without the space. As you can see, this is the last one. We need the space between. So how would you add the space? Who who wants to answer? Yeah, Peter, you got it right. We need to just simply use another plus there, isn't it? We can do like this. So th the full name will be the first name plus space plus surname. And that definitely will work. It works because I tested this before I started the lesson. So I have an advantage here. Where is it? Uh -huh. For some reason it didn't print it. Oh, here we go. And there it is. There is a space. And we could co continue whatever we want. Space. I like chocolate. Chocolate like that. We can keep adding as much as we want. Okie dokie. So let's now learn the next variable, which is an integer. The integer is a number. It's a whole number from minus to plus. All minus numbers and all plus numbers. So integer will be... Let me put my comment here. Integer will be any negative or positive whole number. All mathematicians know what I mean. So it will be from zero to infinity and from minus to minus infinity, including zero. So it's all all plus and minus numbers. So let's create two number variables. So this is a number variable. This is the, this is another number variable. And now we can assign values like we did with um, string. So the value of number one will be 46 and the, and the value of number two will be 12. So let's just let's print next them the same way as we print uh, the strings. So we can print number one then we print string space plus space and then we print the second value 12 space equals space and then we will print the result result which will be number one plus number two and um, let's see if it works and it works so you see we are printing the value of number one here, which is 46. Then we are printing string space plus space. And then we are printing number two. And then we are printing space equals space. And then we will print this mathematical calculation, which results 58. Okie dokie. Again, we can do the same thing what we did with the string. That we can calculate the result first, like this we can create a third variable which will be the first one plus the second one so the result variable has a value 58 now and uh, we could then obviously print that yeah we could just print that similar here right right we could just put that now we can put that result instead of calculating it here we can put that result and that prints exactly the same what we got on the line 12 yeah okay so how we can use the variables uh, further so let's use the number one and number two now more okay so we can do we can do all kind of calculations now using the same numbers so we selected 46 and 12 as numbers so we can first add them together then su then subtract them together 
and then do the multiplication. So this is the power of the thing. We can just say, I want, I want to use these two numbers and using those variables, we can do all kind of different operations and we can then change the values and it will do the operations for the changed values. And let's print all of this. And there we go. 46 multiplied by 12, 552. 46 minus 12. So we are, we are using these two variables and then we will do all kind of operations with them. So I can easily change now this one, isn't it? I can put 77 and then let's say 91. I can run it again and now we have easy, we easily got all the calculations here. We only need to change those two two numbers and we get all of this after that. So that's the power of the variable. Okis dokis, let's continue. Next exercise, we go back to strings. Okay. And what do I have now? So let's now do similar things with the strings again. We do we are doing we are adding strings. String one, string two, we create two strings and we set the first string to be back and we set second string to be crown. Now I have a question for you. What do you think will be? I have a question. If I say string one plus string two. Now this is a thousand dollar question. What will be string one plus string two? I'm waiting. You got it. You got it. It will be background, isn't it? <laughs> Quite clever, isn't it? So, and we can now see that here. I'll remove that. So we can do the calculation here. We can we can say string one plus string two, and then print that after that using the C out. There it is, background. Okay. I hope this is getting clearer and clearer, but I have a reason why I did it here. Now I have a tricky question next here. What if instead of this, I do like this? And now I say string one plus string two. We have, we have four and seven. Remember, remember that when we had background, uh, this when this was back and this was ground, we got background. So what will be if we say four string plus seven string? This is a tricky question. I wonder if somebody can know this straight away. Beginners, any beginner, can you know what is the answer? Is it 47? Yeah, it will be just adding those. These are strings. They are not numbers. They are not numbers. These are string. So it will be 47. Surprise, surprise. It will not calculate the plus. It will not calculate 4 plus 7. It, will, it just adds them together. The computer does not know that these are string. You, you can put anything here, right? The computer doesn't know that that's a, that's a number. It doesn't know that. So it's just it's gonna do the string operation, which is adding them together like this. So how can we do? How can we do? How can we change this such that we we can do this one plus this one? Well, we would need to create two integers instead, like this number one, four, and assign number two, seven, and then calculate them. Yeah, so this is how we can do the same thing using numbers and actually doing the mathematical calculation four plus seven. So this will print 11, which we kind of ex want to expect here. So let's continue now. I hope so far it's been easy to understand. It's a challenge for me always to be able to teach so people understand. Let's go to the next example. So in the next uh, example we will have a salary. So there is a worker who is working in a company and we want to accumulate the salary. Okay, in this first example John has a salary $2,200 per month and here we are printing the accu accumulated income for the year. And if we run this When we run it, we will obviously get whatever we put there. 
but as you can see I calculated this manually using the nice calculator a Windows calculator but this is <laughs> this is hard job what if Peter what if Peter wants to know the same thing now what if Peter wants to print his salary what do I need to do I need to change the name here let's say Peter has 1800 of course and let's say that it's a little bit more difficult like let's say it's like that of course now we need to <laughs> put it first here and then we need to calculate again so we need to go to the calculator and we need to say this one multiplied by 2 right and we need to copy that put it there right of course this is difficult isn't it <sighs> I'm getting already tired doing this I don't want to do this kind of thing but fortunately C++ has an answer there is an easy way to do this and I will show it's the variable the magic word is variable so instead of doing like this what we can do now we can use a variable and I will now show the variable version version and um, like that so we will create a variable which which has the salary value so this is the salary of the person person salary we can actually change the name person salary and way to change it by the way you go rename and you say person salary person's salary actually person's salary and then you press preview and apply so now it changed automatically all of them okay just a trick how to change the name so this double is uh, is a decimal number well it's like this but we don't have any decimals here so it doesn't matter really so it's a number it's a decimal number so the salary of the person is two two thousand two hundred and the name is John obviously we need to put John there but now this is the trick that we are printing the string and then we are printing that variable there and uh, and here we are calculating the salary that the first month is one times 2200 the February will be two times 2200 March will be three times 2200 because this variable is always the same here in all these places the variable value will be 2200 the person salary variable value will be 2200 so this is very cool isn't it so now if I run this you see you see now what if we have another another guy what do, what do what are we gonna do let's say we have Mary who has a salary 2822.5 what are we gonna do well we can do easily we just place the same code here we copy this code what we had here actually let me show you that I'm not cheating okay I will remove this the only thing we need to do for Mary Mary is that we will copy this code okay and paste it here change the name and now we need to change obviously Mary has different salary Mary has 2800 so we simply need to change the variable value here that's the trick here so we're changing the variable value whatever salary Mary has there you go so this one will print John's salary with 2200 and from this this place forwards we change the salary to be 2822 and now Mary will be printed using that value here a couple of more things I will soon end but I have a couple of more examples let's fully understand the variable only a couple of things more so let's think about times table multiples of something so multiple of three will be obviously we can we can just type them here right I just type them manually here so if we run this multiples of three and we will get like that there's nothing nothing interesting here really so how could we use a variable to do the same thing because the problem here now is that what if, we, what if I want the variable of uh, the multiple of six well this is totally wrong I need to I need to type them six twelve getting difficult 
I hope you guys remember the multiples, but it's difficult and it's a lot of work. And what if we need to ask many of these? 12, 13, 15, 100, multiples of 112. I mean, you could put anything here, right? It would be very difficult to try to just manually always change according to this one. So uh, the variable becomes a helper here. So, to, so the way we can do it with the variable is that let's remove this one. Okay, I'll pull it here. So this is the variable version, and I will explain what I'm doing here. So this is the number we are we, we want we want the multiples of this number. So for example, the three, what we did here, the multiples of three, the original task. This is the number we are interested in, and then we will print multiples of number, and the number is three, multiple multiple of three, and then here we will print one multiplied by three, two multiplied by three, three multiplied by three, and so on. And if I change this one to seven, you see what's happening now. Now it prints multiples of seven, 1 times 7, 2 times 7, and so on. You see how easy it is now. I can put 57 here. Multiples of 57. 1 times 57, 2 times 57. Very nice. So let's run it once. There you go. You can use any multiples and it will, in blinking of the eye, it will calculate the thing. Okay, and that was the last thing for variables here. And I hope you understood and if, you, if there's some questions about this variable, please leave a comment and I will try to answer as well as I can. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.